I love this thing. Even with all its flaws, which it has a lot, I still love it. It has a lot of flaws. Last episode, we left on me fixing the four wheel drive because that was not working at all. Replaced all that, got that fixed. It is working perfectly now. Took it for a test drive to enjoy the top off and all the windows down and everything was nice until my brakes started locking up. The front brakes were smoking really bad. Uh, luckily I made it home, but that is something we have to deal with right now. Apparently that's a common issue, but I'm learning a lot of things are common issues with these. So we're gonna tackle it one step at a time. So first thing we're gonna do, jack up this front end, take care of those brakes. Let's tackle it.
calipers, new rotors, new brake pads, all new. Works great. Even left a little mark on the driveway, how good it works. I'm not gonna do the rear brakes because they are drum brakes and I might wanna convert them to disc brakes in the future. I think disc brakes are a lot easier, a lot easier to work on. I think they stop a lot better. But this is all stopping really great. I took it for a test drive and not overheating anymore. Good news. It was actually really easy too because I was expecting a lot of the bolts to be rusted together and it, nope, <laughs> it was all very easy. Uh, it all took about an hour and a half Probably what it took less time if they didn't have to go to the store. I went with slotted rotors and I never had that before, so figured I'd try it out. So we'll see if it makes a difference at all. I don't think it really does, but it definitely looks cool. I was considering replacing the brake lines just to the calipers themselves, but they are in pretty good shape. They look fairly new. Uh, definitely replaced before, so all good there. Now that we have it running good, stopping good, stopped now, <laughs> it's all good. Let's do some normal maintenance on this. I already changed the spark plugs and stuff in the first episode, but I didn't do the oil, and who knows how long it's been since that's been changed. So I wanna do the oil, and a lot of you guys have commented on this cold air intake and called it a hot air intake. So we are gonna replace that. This one has definitely seen better days. It's, it's held together by zip ties. That's not really doing a whole lot, as you can see. <laughs> Falling apart, just like that. Plus whatever this is doing, I don't think that's normal definitely homemade kit definitely needs replaced it's held on by like three clamps <laughs> yeah we're gonna replace that rough country sent me their cold air intake kit it looks like great quality we're gonna install it right now see how hard it is to install uh looks cool too definitely a lot better than whatever that junk is so along with oil change new oil filter we're gonna replace this and see what else we can do to do a little bit of sprucing up and a little bit of maintenance to this thing. We're gonna be driving it a lot more now that it is more reliable. So let's install that, do the oil change, get it all taken care of. New oil, new oil filter, 
new cold air intake that was very easy to install. It came with a complete set of instructions. But if you are like me and don't like reading instructions, you can watch their YouTube channel. They have every product they sell on there and they make full tutorials on how to put it in, <laughs> whatever you need. I watched a video on this and it was pretty basic. It attaches to the radiator support and also a bolt on the inner fender liner. And then everything else is pretty much just plug and play. Snap it in, screw the clamps on and pretty good to go. Pretty easy, pretty simple. I think anyone can do it and it's definitely gonna help with this aftermarket one that was on here. And it also helps with the stock intake if that is something you wanna switch out. For the oil, I just used some full synthetic 10W30. That's what it was recommended. People are picky about their oil brands. Me, not so much. I just use whatever everyone else recommends. There's always comments about I should use different kind of oil, but this works. Uh, changed the oil filter too, went ahead and did that. And while I was at it, I also changed out the drain plug. You wanna do that realistically every time you change the oil, but you can get away with replacing it every other time if you want to. I really need some new hood latches. These ones, I don't know, these aftermarket ones aren't really that great. So it's pretty much ready. All the maintenance is done. New oil, new spark plugs, <laughs> new basic maintenance, all done. And it's ready to go, ready to drive. There is one issue I haven't told you about yet, and that is it does not have any cold AC. I did not check the heat because I live in Florida. We don't ever really use that, but we do use the AC pretty much year round. On a Jeep, probably not use it as much. I'm sure people don't use it at all. I think there was an option for it not to even come with air conditioning, but this one has it and it does not work. It does not cool at all. So first thing I'm gonna check, I'm gonna let it run for a little bit, see if the compressor kicks on. Also gonna check, make sure it has some coolant in there. Probably go to the store and pick some up. If it is full on coolant and the compressor kicks on, then we know that the compressor is most likely bad. Even if the compressor doesn't kick on, it's probably bad. It's getting up here in age, so it wouldn't surprise me if this thing went bad. Hopefully it's just a couple cans of Freon and then that will fix it. So we're gonna do that. Also, I have not washed this thing yet. So I'm gonna break out the pressure washer and give it a good wash. Maybe it can blow off all that rust and then be perfect underneath. <laughs> we'll see.
Y'all don't understand how nice it is when an episode is just stress-free, everything is easy, everything works out how it should. It should happen more often. I wish it did. AC is fixed. It just took a can and a half of Freon and it started working. The compressor started kicking on. Sometimes when your car is low on Freon, it won't even kick on the compressor. I guess some kind of safety feature. I'm not really sure why it does that, but put a couple of cans of Freon in it and start it right up. Ice cold air. I didn't see any leaks. We'll be able to tell here in a few weeks of driving it around, but I think we're good to go. I went ahead and took off these metal rusted out side steps. Uh, they were just looking really bad. <laughs> there was no saving them. So I just took them off, put the bolts back in to keep water out from inside. I don't know if that's gonna help considering there's a huge hole in the floor pan, but it helps a little bit. Went ahead and pressure washed it, cleaned it up. There's a lot of mold on this thing from sitting for so long. A lot of rust streaks that I was able to get off with some rust remover. That was just on the surface of the paint. It wasn't actual rust on the metal itself. So that was easy to come off. Uh, the actual rust though, <laughs> doesn't come off as easy. Also cleaned up the fender liners, make it look a little bit prettier, cleaned up the wheels, pressure wash it all down, cleaned up the top. I didn't get the very top because I didn't want to pull out my ladder <laughs> to get to it, but I will get that another day. I just wanted to clean it up and interior didn't really need much. Just some vacuuming, cleaned up the dash, wiped it all down. Looks a lot better. It all looks good now. Very shiny, brand new, like brand new. Just don't look underneath and don't. <laughs> <laughs> the rust falls every time you close the door. <laughs> Speaking of rust, I found a new hole while I was pressure washing. Uh, I was pressure washing around this because there was a lot of mold and buildup. And there's a hole right there that was hidden. I shouldn't be surprised finding extra rust holes <laughs> just from looking underneath and just what we've had to deal with so far. But we're going to be fixing that next episode we're going to be tackling the main rust issues a lot of the frame issues and the hole in the floor we're going to get all that taken care of because that's really the main thing that's keeping it from being a good working wrangler again just that little concerning part but i'm going to load up my trailer now because i am going to go pick up something that i think will help with that rust i think let's go pick it up hmm it's a bit rustier than I expected. Oh yeah, that is, huh. Too bad I already paid for it. 